sharp cuts on that. So if they could melt this down, they could just mold it. Yes. Instead of having to carve it. I'm going to show you how did they mold on the other side. Okay. The pattern of the mold uh -huh. of the pieces. Wow, really? Yes. So imagine, they were ahead for many things. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is a megalithic piece in the upper side of the pyramid. Or that you can see the energy of the rock just moving the compass and how it's moving the compass because the energy of this stone is very high. So, we have a lot of research in the past about this uh, phenomenon, which one will give us an idea that they used to use the energy. Unfortunately, the, the light here is so intense because we have almost no ultraviolet protection at uh, Tiwanaku. But I did see that the compass that was inside our application in that phone, as he moved the compass along, it, it never held a constant position. It kept moving and moving. So there is some kind of magnetic anomaly in some of these stones here on the Akapana Pyramid at Tiwanaku in Bolivia. Well, I'm going to show you a tunnel from the upper side of the pyramid of Akapana, which one goes all the way down to the small temple. In this drawing, I can show you the whole pyramid, and in the black line is where the tunnel goes down. In the second, we can see how long is the tunnel and how it's divided. Different levels and the entrance, it just got 45 centimeters by 75 centimeters. A small guy can be underneath and get into the into the end of the of the place. See what we were, what we're showing right now is the entrances. That is the this is the this one with the wrong thing with is, the circle with the circle. That's yeah, the, the, where the entrance was. Yeah. That inside of that tunnel or duct, we have stalactites. Ah. One of the stalactites measure more than 50 centimeters talking about that in every two and a half centimeters means a 100 to 100 thousand years that means this place was built approximately 12 years ago 12 12 years ago 12 years 12,000 years 12, ago. 12,000, okay. 12,000 years ago, but I'm talking just about the pyramid, the pyramid. The other things should be older than the, the, the pyramid. So this is, I'm showing you just part of what it is Tiwanaku and what we have in, for example, in this tunnel. This tunnel will go straight to the semi temple and they should be a lot of tunnels. So Antonio's explanation of the, the fact that there is a, a tunnel that goes down and across to the sunken, uh, what's called the sunken temple, that uh, originally this may have been not a temple or whatever, religious site, but it, was, it could have been a processing plant for metallic ore because a lot of gold, silver, copper, tin, etc. is found in this area. And so if the Akapana Pyramid was actually a processing center for trying to separate the metals from the different dirts, etc. here, then that tunnel could be a way of moving the material into what is now the sunken temple. But that sunken temple could have been a giant pool where the gold would go to the bottom, then the silver, then the copper, and then the mud would be later as a separation pond. Much later in time, thousands of years later, 
This place was rediscovered by the Tiwanaku people and became a religious center. And after that, the, um, the local residents who live here now inhabited the site. But we're looking at the possibility of dating this site in terms of original construction back at least 12,000 years. And we do know there was a global catastrophe that happened approximately 11,700 years ago that was global in terms of its impact. So this ancient site, if it was built before that time, then of course it would have been devastated and possibly all of the residents died and it would have been abandoned then for th thousands of years. Other people would have found it in ruin, reconstructed it for their own purpose, and that's why we believe that initially the site of Tiwanaku and Pumapunku were very pragmatic in function. Again, possibly an ore processing plant. And then thousands of years later, the Tiwanaku people converted it into a religious spiritual center. So look at how much mud there is, six to ten feet, that has buried the stone construction here. And notice no mortar whatsoever. And geologists have backed up the theory that what happened to this pyramidal structure, which was once solid uh, red sandstone, was a giant wave of water and mud came from Lake Titicaca, which is about seven miles that way, came over top of the entire thing and buried almost all of Tiwanaku and Pumapunku. And again, the time frame, approximately 12,000 years ago. So again, the Akapana pyramid, so-called pyramid here. And again, before these heads were put in here, before it was used as a ceremonial center, it may have simply been a pool for collecting the water and the, the mud and the metallic ore that came down from there through Antonio Portugal's tunnel. A settling pond. And here we have the carved statue, or a carved statue, of Viracocha. Notice he has a full beard. Now this was made during the Tiwanaku period, as in about a thousand years ago. But it is much, much more recent than the megalithic works and the fine tooling and cutting that we have seen and will see much more of. Also, these heads. Some people have believed that they represent different um, ethnic types, different people from different parts of the world, but they're so badly carved and so badly eroded that how could you possibly say that one looks Chinese or one looks African or whatever? So this is evidence that this was in fact a settling pond because these drains all go to a hole allowing and a channel going out, allowing the whole thing to be emptied of the water so that all you have left afterwards is the mud, the copper, the silver, the gold, and other metals. Now look at those horizontal marks. They look to me like machine marks, not hand tool marks. They're very even, even penetration of the stone. That could be lost to ancient high technology. This may not have originally been a drain, it could have been something else. And if you didn't know what you were looking for, you would walk right past this. This shows you part of the underground system at Tiwanaku. These stones, at one point, fit perfectly together. But what was its function originally? Not a bathtub. Possibly again, part of the refining process. So we're now at Pumapunku. This is one of the greatest examples of lost ancient high technology. You can see this channel here with the holes. This is also a perfectly flat surface, or perfect enough it is flat within a few ten thousandths of an inch. That could not have been done by some Bronze Age culture such as the famous Tiwanaku culture. And also you see these monstrous slabs of red sandstone to get a sense of perspective. 
and they come from the backside of that mountain range in the background as you can see. So these big slabs of uh, red sandstone could be the foundation of whatever Puma Punku was originally. Of course they depict it as being uh, some place of spirituality or religious significance. It's more likely, like at Tiwanaku, there was a more pragmatic function that it, it uh, performed some, oh, how can one even put it, industrial function of some kind thousands of years prior to the arrival of the Tiwanaku people. And this is a large slab of andesite, a different stone than this uh, red sandstone in behind. And if you look very carefully, you see the mountain range way in the back. That is where the quarry is. And the most famous features, of course, at Tiwanaku are what are called the H-blocks, of which I believe there are eight. We don't know how many there were in the beginning, but eight remain, and each one is a different shape and size. They were not produced in some factory out of a mold. Everyone is different. And one is unfinished. Notice that mark there? It's missing from this one. Also notice the precision of these surfaces. Almost exact, but here in the interior there's a curve and also this is rough. So this surface is unfinished, this surface is finished. How could a Bronze Age culture have possibly done work like this? They could not have. And now you're looking at the backside of two of the H blocks. And here are the backs of the four H blocks that are lined up in a row. You can see they're not exactly the same. The difference in the widths of some of the H blocks as well as the openings um, are as much as a quarter to half an inch. So that wouldn't be the result of um, expansion or contraction. They were manufactured seemingly individually. And the question is, what is their function? Also, there are no uh, 90 degree angles going in. The indentations are not 90 degrees, they're off. They're actually, and this is what engineer Chris Dunn found out, they're actually what are called dovetails. They're wider on the inside than they are the outside. And uh, most people think there's one gate at Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, but in fact, there are four that remain. This is one of them. And you can tell by looking at the sides that it didn't stand freely. Originally, it was interconnected with other stones. So that's another intriguing characteristic about um, Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, which are in fact the same place. It's just they're separated by fences by archaeologists. But the stones didn't simply fit together without mortar or cement or clay, they were three-dimensionally interlocking. And the question is, why would you bother to do that? Earthquake proofing? Well, I'm sure this site was probably basically earthquake proof, but it could be that the reason why they had to three-dimensionally interlock was some kind of vibratory purpose, which uh, I described much more in other videos. And if you find that idea crazy, Engineers that we've brought here have said it would be very difficult for modern machinists to be able to cut some of these surfaces, especially the very strange angles. And so how could a so-called primitive culture, such as the Tiwanaku, possibly do work like this? The more we study, the more we find out. And unfortunately, the more we have to speculate. That's the function of hiddenincatours.com at 13,000 feet on the Altiplano, Oblivion.